these Canadian red maples that I want that I want to send to Gav of Not Another Bonsai Channel. I've already started to leaf out. Um, it's you know coming up to mid February, so root balls bound in wet kitchen towel. This is a big whip, so I've just kind of loosely. Um, tied it together so that it can fit. This is a large letter postage box. Well hi everyone, welcome back to Not Another Bonsai channel. Well, I've just received this little gift in the post. So, quite sure who it's from, but let's uh, get a knife to this box, open it up and uh, see what's inside. So it looks as though this box has got a little bit squashed in the post. Uh, the postman did squash it through my letterbox, but you know, I think it should be okay. It does seem to be slightly open on the end. Oh, oh it looks as though we have some trees. They look pretty cool. Uh, is there a better way to open this? Maybe if we get a knife on the other side, slice through this piece of tape just here. Uh, maybe flip it over. Yeah, we can slice through this piece of tape just here. This piece of tape just here like so and now this should open up and it looks as though we have look like maple trees and just here it says to gav two canadian red maples to celebrate your heritage best wishes jonas so thanks so much for these jonas i really do appreciate it so yeah these are two canadian red maples and uh, i do have canadian ancestry and canadian heritage which i'm very proud of Oh Canada, our home and native land. Uh, so I've always been on the lookout for Canadian red maples and I've just never sort of found good ones. You know, I've, I've tried growing them from seed but it never quite worked out. So yeah, thanks so much for these Jonas, I really do appreciate it. So let's get these out of the box and plant them up into some bonsai soil and hopefully we can get them underway as little bonsai trees. So I've chosen this little part. It's uh, quite a deep, quite a deep part, which I thought would be ideal for maples because they do like to create, you know, do like to put that tap root deep into the ground. And I think this, this is going to be plenty big for these two trees to get underway as little trees. I'm also going to use this this uh, black screening that Jay from Bonsai's, Bonsai's Forever sent me. So yeah, thanks again for this, Jay. I've, this is the first project this is going to be used on. So yeah, thanks so much for this. And then I'm just going to use this. This is uh, just a mixture of a very fine grit and cocoa mix. I've used this for some of my seedling projects in the past and I thought this would be ideal for these. It's nice and gritty, nice and free draining and it'd be perfect for these little seedlings, or these little plants to get underway as little trees. So you can see I've just drilled a hole in the bottom of this pot. Uh, this is one of the pots that I bought from Mo the Potter. Now you might have seen that I've, I've bought many of these pots over the past so many months and I've drilled a hole in the base of each one of them. I must have about 15 of these pots now in my collection. If you're interested to know how I go about drilling holes in the pots, I will put a link to the video just up here. But uh, let's just get some of this screening. So I won't need too much. Just need a small amount. So I think we'll just cut a little bit just like so. And that's gonna be plenty big just to put in the base of this pot, just like so. Now I know some people might say that you, should, you could wire that in place, but personally I think once we get the soil in, that's, it's going to have to be held in place just fine. And I'm not really one for using wire to either wire trees into pots or wire these screen into the bottom of the pot. And that's really why I wasn't too worried about drilling smaller holes in the base of the pots for wire to go through. But you know, if you are, of course you can do that. You can add more holes than just a single drainage hole if that's what you do. But for me, I don't, so I didn't worry about it. So with that drainage screen just in the base of the pot, all you would then do is just grab some soil, just put that on top, just like so. And then that's gonna hold that screen in the base of the pot over the hole, just fine. Now, Jonas did say before he sent these that he has already root pruned these to some extent to you know, get them ready for putting in the post. So I don't think I'll be doing any root pruning today, but I think I'm just gonna put them in the pot, we'll plant them up and yeah, hopefully they get going as little trees. So let's take a look at this little one. So just unwrap the little fella. Oh, he's got loads of root. Look at all the root on this tree, wow. Nice amount of roots. I can see he's already taken, yeah, he's already snipped the tap root, which is good. We have the nice, nice web of feeder roots, that is fantastic. 
that's going to be brilliant. Just go stay on the sides. We have a funny root there that wants to ping back. Let's just get a little bit of soil. Put that on top just to hold that in place. And again, I'm not going to wire these in. There's no need. They're only small trees. And ultimately, I want them to grow. Now, do I want this tree to be this big? Well, no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> I don't really want a bonsai tree that big. And it's quite a wispy, uh, sort of, sort of uh, wispy stem. Um, so what are we going to do with it? Well, ideally, I do need to make a decision as to where to cut it. Now you can see it is starting to bite out or leaf out at several points after this stem. So we need to make a decision where we're going to make the chop and how tall do we want this tree to be. So we can see just looking at the stem, we have it's starting to bite out slightly here or leaf out there. It's starting to leaf out here, it's starting to leaf out here, it's starting to leaf out here, and then further up the stem and even further up the stem. And then the bites way up at the top are just starting to leaf out. Now, ideally, I'm thinking I should make the chop here or here. Now, if I make the chop here, we can have a tree that long, which is quite tall, but hopefully over the coming months or weeks or months, we should see buds start to develop here and should be able to you know, develop a bit of, um, well, you know, to develop taper. So when a bud pops here, we can kind of carry on and then we just end up with a more interesting trunk that, what, rather than just a, a straight trunk going upwards. So I think with that decision in mind, we are going to make the chop just here. So I'm just going to get the scissors. I'm not going to use pruners because this is a very, I mean, you could do, but I have the scissors on the go because I just cut the screen. So let's just put that in there and bang, that's that cut in half. We might also be able to pop this up as a cutting. I might do that, we might even cut it into two. Let's cut it into two. Let's cut it, I don't know, let's uh, cut it here. We treat these two as cuttings. We put them in the same pot and if they grow, fantastic. So again, Jonas has uh, kind of, you know, done a, a rough bit of pruning to these roots. You can see he's cut back some of these just to make it easier to put in the post. But now it's a nice web of feeder roots on that tree. Very healthy tree. Yeah, fantastic. Lovely, lovely looking tree. And that, I think, has planted those two little trees up. I think they look fantastic. And hopefully the roots should just, you know, spread out and fill the pot and they should grow on and become fantastic little Canadian red maple trees. All right, so then we were gonna try and use these for cutting. So what I might do is just, you can see there's a couple of buds that have opened up here or leaves that have opened up or popped. So we don't want them. Take away that one. Uh, maybe shorten this slightly just to there and you just do this in a normal way. You have a couple of nodes just here, cut that off at an angle, and then just poke it into your pot. And if it takes, fantastic. I mean, if it doesn't, it's no worry, but I always think when you have trees like this and you cut them down, it's always worth taking cuttings and seeing if you can get them going, because of course you increase your stock of trees. So thanks so much for these, Jonas. I have Canadian red maples as part of my bonsai collection. I'm over the moon, as I say, I've I've been trying to grow these for a long time. I've tried growing them from seed and it's never worked. I've been on the lookout. I've tried to find them from like garden centers and garden nurseries and they've just never had them. I've had Japanese maples by the boatload, but Canadian red maples, I, just, I haven't been able to find. So yeah, thanks so much, Jonas, for these. I really do hope they grow on and become fantastic bonsai trees. Well, I do highly recommend that you head over to Jonas's channel and check out some of his content. He can be found over at Bonsai Cornwall. I will put a link to his channel just up here. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Jonas. It was fantastic. A fantastic guy of Canadian red maples as part of my bonsai collection. That's brilliant. Well, I really hope that these are filled, you know, the roots fill the pot, they establish well, they get growing and, and just become fantastic trees in the future. This, this is a really fun project and I really do hope that these Come some great trees for the future. Well, anyway, um, thanks for joining me on this one, guys. Uh, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. I really do hope that these go on and become some very nice bonsai trees. And with that, I might sign off. So, 
yeah, thanks for joining me today. And as always, take it easy, have a great day, and I'll catch you on the next one.